Hey everyone, it's Erin Melton. We're back again and really excited about who we have on today. It is Nick Good. Nick, thank you so much for being with us today. Thank you for having me. Absolutely, absolutely. So tell us a little bit about yourself and how you got into real estate. Of course. Uh, uh, my name is Nick Good. Um, I'm from Dallas, Texas, born and raised. Um, and my my journey to real estate was not one that um, that was ever in my plans, right? So um, graduated when when I was in school. I actually was uh, I was a football player and got hurt and um, lost all my friends during that time. So you know I was the jock, and then as as I got hurt, um, all my jock friends just kept doing what they were doing, and I was left trying to figure out you know to figure out who I am and who I wanted to be. Um, so I went down the path of skipping school, always the right move, um, and then getting my GED, dropped out of high school. So um, by the way, I come from a family. My mom has a doctorate in education, is the, is the superintendent of a school district. So um, when your kid drops out of, out of school, I'm sure that, that uh, doesn't look favorably. On Needless them. to say, uh, dinner was a little awkward. It was, it was. And um, went to college. And as I was in college, I was delivering pizzas. And um, we, I always had a desire, my brother and I always had a desire to get into real estate investing. We read Rich Dad, Poor Dad, tried to do some, some owner finance and, and some wraparound mortgages and, and attempted it, but never successfully got it off the ground. And as I was delivering pizzas, um, the you know, gas prices, it was, it was 2006 gas prices were slowly starting to rise up. Um, and or 2005, I'm sorry. And started eating into my into my tips that I was making. So yes. I was like, all right, no reasonable person as they get older wants to do this as a career. Right. So I started looking for jobs. And when mm -hmm. I did that, uh, there was a posting on our college job board for a real estate assistant, applied for it. I said, what better way to learn the investor, real estate investment investing game than to go work for a real estate brokerage. Sure. And got the job. It was a little little husband and wife independent broker. Um, I learned how they how they were working their referral business. I learned how they did their farming. And in 2007, when I graduated college, they offered me a full time position with a OK little salary. And I, I'd asked them, I said, I appreciate this offer, but let me ask you, can I make one hundred thousand dollars selling real estate? They were like, yeah, absolutely. Cool. I will reject your salaried offer, go 100% commission. Oh, by the way, I just gotten married and I just bought a house two months prior to that. Of course. So what better way to then uh, go into the 100% commission field? And um, I did not make $100,000 my first year in real estate. No? Nope. No. Sold three houses. So fast forward today, and I'm sure there's some other questions that I see in here. So let's fast forward today. Um, our real estate team, the Good Home Team, with my brother as my business partner, we sell over 200 houses a, a year, a little over 1.7 million in commissions, and we learned it. I learned it the hard way, right? Yeah. 2007 happened, or 2008, the recession happened, and and yep. um, you know everyone was freaking out, and, yep. and we just learned how to how to build and survive and thrive. Absolutely, absolutely. There's definitely something to be said about. Um... You know, we've been in the business very similar amount of time. I got licensed in 2001. And so you saw those good times and you went through the real good times and then the crash. And it's not like real estate stopped, but things were definitely different. And that adjusting and and trying to do everything possible to make it through. And I think you got it sounds like you did it very well during that time. We had some real rough times and had a broker that definitely said to me, if you can this is about one of the worst recessions I've ever seen. And he had been in a very long time. He said, if you can make it through, I promise you that people are watching and you will be so thankful if you stuck with it. And um, sure enough, I'm so glad I did. Came out a little rough for wear, you know, arms kind of hanging off. And you're like, I'm here. Somebody said, if I stick with it, it'll be okay. And that was true. Well, and, and here, here's the thing, how I looked at it, right? I got in in 2007. Sure. And so the we were running on fumes, right? I, mm -hmm. I as an assistant, I saw how great it was, but right. I never got to personally experience it. I was not prospecting. I was just I was sitting behind the scenes, right? And um, and and in December two thousand seven, I joined a, a little brokerage called Keller Williams. Um, yes. And so when I when I joined that company, 
um, and the recession hit, what I what I quickly realized was that I, I saw people that was doing really they were doing really well in the industry, and then all of a sudden they were getting their car repoed, they mm -hmm. were in foreclosure, and and for whatever reason I I this is something that I, that stuck out with me is that I never wanted to have a business like theirs. Right. Right. Because my question, I was coming in and I said, well, why can't you sell houses during this time? I didn't know any better. Right. Right. I'm going to tell you right now, I think this market that we're in today is worse than the 2008 recession. Right. And so I'm going through this, not knowing any better. Mm -hmm. And I'm finding, I'm finding ways to, to take market share. I'm finding mm -hmm. ways to sell houses. I'm actually making more money than I ever was making. Um, now, albeit it wasn't all it wasn't all great the way I'm talking about it right now. There was a of course there was a, a light bulb moment in 2008 where I had I had lucked into um, a retirement active adult retirement community here mm -hmm. where you have to be 50 at least 55 to 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 own a house and to, or to to buy someone right. on that ownership has to has to be 55 plus. Now in 2008 I was 25 years old. I had no business selling in that community. Um, right. and, and I just stumbled into it where I, I got a honeypot of buyers and sellers. Um, and, and in one month I had eight, eight clients under contract. And if you would have seen the pep in my step and, and I'm calculating how much money I'm going to make. Right. Um, and then as the recession really started to come to grips, all eight of those contracts fell apart mm -hmm. and they did not come back to life. No. I had no money. Mm-hmm. I didn't know what I was going to do. I questioned whether or not I I wanted to stay in this business. Right. Right. Um, and so mm -hmm. I did what anybody does during that time. I started going on job interviews. I said, you know right. what? Let me go look for jobs. Maybe I can do this part time. Sure. And um, going on job interviews. And I get a job offer. I, I went on lots of them. I get a job offer from a, a from an asset management company. Right during that time, they were starting to see that there was a backlog of, of foreclosed properties right. that the banks needed to, to offload. Mm -hmm. And so when 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 I went on multiple interviews, they they this company offered me the position. And they said you need to work Monday through Saturday, and in order to hit your bonus, because they were gracious enough to offer bonuses, mm -hmm. um, I needed to really when I calculated, I needed to work on Sunday and probably still somehow find an, an eighth day to work in order to hit those bonuses. Right. And so I was like, you know, had no money. I'm, I'm, I'm a little down. I'm definitely down on myself. I'm doubting whether I can make it in this business. And I said, mm -hmm. I appreciate the offer. Let me, you know, let me go home and, and, and think it over. Let me talk with my wife. And as I'm driving home, the, the, there was this little light bulb moment that happened that said, okay, if I'm working Monday through Saturday from eight to five, eight to six, I'm probably going to work longer than that. Right. If I truly committed that amount of time into my real estate business, there's no reason why I can't make six figures. Mm -hmm. Because let's be honest, I was probably like every other real estate real realtor out there. I was probably only working on prospecting and lead generation. Probably only working 20 hours a week, if if right. if at most. I'm 25 years old, mm -hmm. and so I turned it down. Didn't know what I was gonna do. I still had, you know, I had enough, I, I you know, I, I at least had paid my MLS dues and everything else and um, started going and learning the prospecting based business, right? Being proactive instead of reactive. Right. And that's when I started learning about expires and working the expired game. That's when I started really working the internet lead generation game before internet leads were really popular during that time. Mm -hmm. And ever since the, that, that part of 2008, it was, it was probably, I think it was the first probably either April or May when that happened ever since then, it's been, it's, it's been I've made no less than, than six figures in, in my business um, take home. Right. And that's all because being prospecting base. And yeah. that's what I teach today of how to re being recession proof in your business. You should be able, if you are proactive in your business, you can withstand and survive any type of market, even this one. That 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 makes perfect sense. So the things that you were kind of talking about, kind of expand upon that a little bit and tell us a bit more about recession proofing your business. Absolutely. So um, 
again, I didn't have any money, right? So the first thing I I wasn't going to dive into cold calling right in it. I didn't dive into expired as, as um, right off the bat, right? I wanted to go. I was like, what's the easier way? Well, let me do the internet lead generation business. Got it. And so what I did first is I bought a program off of eBay. I could not afford it. Put it on a credit card. Mm-hmm. I bought a program off of eBay to how to run ads on Craigslist. Okay. Um, and then what I did is then I resold that program on eBay so that I could make my money back, right? And and a little bit of extra. And so this program gave me the ads of what to put on Craigslist. And I just started, I followed it to a T. Um, and back then in 2008, I had a website. I couldn't even afford the IDX home search. It wasn't built in at that time the right. way a lot of them are today. And so I'm sending, I'm sending traffic from Craigslist to a website saying, you know, free home search or, you know, whatever the, the ad title was at that time. Right. And these, these leads were getting pissed because they weren't getting the home search. Right. Right. I didn't have my system dialed in on calling them right away, you know, mm-hmm. speedily. but I started to get some business from it. Mm-hmm. Started to make some money. Um, and, and that was going well. And then, and then I started to look to look around people in my marketplace to see what mm-hmm. they were doing. And sure. at the end of 2008 is when I really started focusing on going after expires, getting out of my comfort zone because my friends, I'm 25 years old. My friends aren't buying from me. They're right. still in college or they're broke. Right. Right. My friend's parents weren't buying from their broke kid's friend. No. Right. So I had to do what, what I, what, what anybody at that time, or even today, I had to go and find and, and build relationships with people who did not know me. The sure. lowest hanging fruit. I got this from uh, Michael Reese. Mm-hmm. Michael Reese um, and Jay Kinder ran a coaching company called Kinder, Kinder Reese Coaching. Mm-hmm. And Michael Reese was in my marketplace in Frisco, Texas. Okay. And so I watched him, right? I watched him go after the expired, the low hanging fruit. What's the lowest hanging fruit? For sale by owners and expires. Those, those homeowners have raised their hand saying that they were wanting to, they're wanting to sell their house, right? There's a little, some obstacles you got to face. And so 2008, I started making calls and um, started to, to learn how to script, how to role play, how to, how to um, get used to rejection. And again, 2000, from 2009, it became expired. I'm still a little weak at four cell boners. It's not my passion. But our expires has been our bread and butter since 2009. Okay. Very, very interesting. Um, what would you say is your why, Nick? Back then, it's different today. So back then, I wanted just to make a lot of money. I wanted mm-hmm. to have private jet money. Okay. Today, I'm married with, you know, I got, actually, I got divorced because of this business. I got remarried and and I have two children. Um, and... Um, one of my mentors talked about my my why is family legacy, right? And and the reason being is think back. Can you you can probably most people can probably name their grandparents' names. Mm-hmm. It dwindles down. Very few actually know their great grandparents. Yeah, and it's even fewer that they know their great great grandparents. Mm-hmm. And so maybe it's a little bit of an ego in me. But I want to make sure that I set my 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 family, their family, their families up for for success. Right? Sure. We don't we don't know where everything's going. We don't know what the government's going to do. We don't know how this how this new economy or ecosystem is going to be. So I want to make sure that I I set them up and give and, and hedge the bet a little bit for them. So it's family sure. legacy. That's that's a great why, and that will definitely drive. What would your adolescent self not recognize about you today? The, this is always, I saw this question, by the way, and and it's always tough because my adolescent self was, I was very introverted. Um, um, I was, I was the fat kid growing up and um, that honestly held a lot of things back in my life. There was a lot of excuses I've made. So he, that person would not recognize the the outgoing person, the leader that I am today, mm-hmm. right? And a lot of that hinges because of my childhood. I would not change it because I wouldn't be here if it wasn't for the way that, right. I was, that, that I was brought up. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. 
you wouldn't necessarily want to go back to that place. No, I don't want no. to relive it again. That's for nope. sure. No, nope. there's really hard things that truly shape you as a person. You don't want to go back there, but they make such a difference. And I think it gives people a true perspective of what is what is good and what isn't good. And that true perspective of if you've ever been in a real dark place that getting even close to that and you go, oh, I know the signs and yeah. I'm never going to be at that place again. And, and, and it would that's what still drives me today. Mm -hmm. Right. Even though it's my big why is the family legacy. What, sure. what drives me is a is a fear of, of being seen as a failure. Mm -hmm. Right. And, and a lot of that stems from, from, you know, how, how I was, how I viewed myself growing up mm -hmm. and the lack of confidence that I had. That's very inspiring. It really is very much. So how does being a part of EXP and Honey Badger Nation, how does that make you feel, Nick? Amazing. I mean, look, I came from Keller Williams where, where the culture there is great. Um, mm -hmm. And um, but I noticed that there was a shift there is that, you know, as companies, as companies grow and get bigger, there was a shift in, in how the culture was and how the sharing, um, sure. and the collaboration became, it became right. a pay to play type opportunity. Not that mm -hmm. there's anything wrong with that. Right. It just wasn't what, it wasn't the opportunity. It wasn't what I was looking for. It wasn't and the so, vision that you kind of had seen the whole, what it was based upon. Correct. And so. Our at EXP and, and our Honey Badger group in, in particular, right? It we are truly when we came over here, we said why we're leaving. It's it's collaboration over competition. Mm -hmm. yep. I can tell you today that my business, my agents businesses have continued to grow mm -hmm. because of our honey badger and our EXP alignment and network Absolutely. of being able to learn what is working, what's working for that agent. And you're not trying to get me to sign up for some coaching program exactly. or to sign up for anything, you know, that's that's you know, your, your, you know, your little bias because you get an affiliate fee on it. This is right. all about making our group, our company better than what it was before. Absolutely. Very, very good. So Nick, you've had a lot of success up to this point in your career. And I know you kind of touched upon it a little bit before, but um, what is important to you at this stage of your career and also of your life? So it's, it's for my career, it's, it's, I have, I want, I have a goal of, of really helping our agents become financially free in a, mm -hmm. in a tough business like this, mm -hmm. right. Um, to get off that transactional hamster wheel. Yes. Um, I, I have a, I have my brother and I own an investment company that has over a hundred million dollars of, of portfolio holdings that we have. Mm -hmm. And I, I can see what residual income I can see what, what wealth and, and what it can do, what it could, it can be a freeing experience. Right. And it makes, it makes making tough decisions a lot easier. Sure. So, so what I want is I want all, I want my agents within our, our organization to, to make a million dollars, whether mm -hmm. that's through investments and commissions, whether that's through, through the EXP stock, whether that's a combination of all three. Right. But I want, I want my people in my organization to, to be financially free, whatever mm -hmm. that means to them. Absolutely. And then, and then like for myself, it's continuing to pass along what I've learned to my children. Mm -hmm. Um, and, and to be able to, to have experiences that, that, you know, they normally, that they normally wouldn't have in any other, you know, and at any other career that I would probably have gone down. Absolutely. For sure. So just to kind of circle back around to when you had dropped out of school, and got your GED and the position that your mom was in. And now obviously you have the family business and what have you. When would you say that things shifted with your family that they were really seeing you in like that light of like, okay, you went the right path. You did the right thing. Maybe it was different than I would have done, but good I for mean, you. Look, I'll give, I'll give my family credit for not, not, you know, making myself the black sheep, by the way, my brother followed in my, my footprints he right. that as well. Right. So, right. so um, it kind of, it kind of set the, set the bar for that. Now, mm -hmm. what I will say again, looking back is that it actually showed my sales skill ability. Cause I made a presentation on why, why I should allow this, why they should allow me to drop out. 
you know, I said, I'm going to go to college. By the way, I do have a college degree. My, my wife and my parents always get upset with me when I say I dropped out of college and leave that part out. Um, so I did go to college and, and finish that. Um, but it was it was more so in the beginning where she's she saw, you know, my 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 dad and mom, my dad's my dad comes from a the same career his entire life. Sure. Um, and so she saw us taking risk. And so mm-hmm. from the very beginning, taking a risk and 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 not relying on a W-2 salary job mm-hmm. and being stuck in a corporate world. Mm-hmm. She was proud from then. I mean, I, re- I remember her telling us in 2009 and 10, she was proud of what we were doing and what we were building. So um, awesome. it was really from that and actually following through with our commitments, right? We yes. didn't, we, we didn't go down a path of, of, you know, drugs or, right. um, you know, not working and being a mooch off of, off of, you know, our parents or anything like that. We, we went out there, we were proactive and, mm-hmm. and we said, we, we did what we said we were going to do, which was, mm-hmm. we were, we were going to be financially independent. And you did it. Well, this has been so great. Thank you so much for joining us. I've learned so much and I know everyone will take a lot from this and important things to keep in mind as we push forward into an interesting market. Yes, yes. It will. Look, I, I, we've probably got, I, mean, I don't know how much longer this market can sustain, but, um, you know, if, as long as you stay proactive in your lead generation, mm-hmm. there is plenty of business even in this market to go around. Absolutely. Thanks again so much, Nick. Thank you for having me. Thank you.